This episode of The Libby O Show is brought to you by Sweet 501 and Integrated Production Solutions. I'm Skylar Day, and you're watching The Libby O Show. How did she do it? Do it. Do it. Do it. Libby. Oh, oh. Libby. Oh, oh. Libby. Three. Show. Skylar Day, welcome to the Libby O Show. How are you? I am just peachy keen. Yeah. How's Los yeah. Angeles right now for you? It's good. It's nice and uh, the weather's nice. It was so weird when all uh, quarantine began. It was raining for like two weeks, and I was, which I usually love because I'm like, you know. I'm a Georgia girl, I like weather, but I was like, Dang. no, I need sunshine or else I'm literally going to shrivel up and keel over because I was just like, no, I need, I need to like wake up and have some sunshine because we're stuck in the house. So I need to sit in my backyard and have this. But I felt like even more isolated with all the rain. It was just like a weird. A weird like, thing. Yes. Oh, and it never rains in LA, which is so yeah. funny. It really doesn't. I was home in Georgia last weekend for Mother's Day. Oh, were you? Yes, I was. And so that was nice. We actually, we had a little bit of cold weather um, while I was at home. Yeah, we went on on the boat and it was super windy, but we were like fighting through it because the sun was out and it's like, we're going to make summer come back. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you've been pretty busy promoting your new song, which I'm very excited to talk about. That has a lot to do with, you know, how people are coping um, with this new new season of life, as we call it. Um, it's called Six Feet Apart, and you wrote it with uh, Steve Solomon. And so first of all, explain, you know, what led you to want to write a song about this time, and then how it's encouraged you personally after releasing it. Well, I, so gosh, we've been in quarantine for two months now. So in the beginning, I was in this weird space of, um, I really wanted to write because I, I really don't know how I feel about things until I've either tried to write about them and maybe they don't work and I just throw them out. But I at least like go through the motions of, you know, trying to, um, to write about it. And, um, and I just... I was just trying to write. I wasn't necessarily trying to write a, a quarantine song. I really didn't think that that was what was going to come out. But um, I could not, for the life of me, write anything. I was just so frustrated and so um, just had writer's block for weeks. And I was just so, um, and I didn't know why. And I was like, I, because I was seeing so many people being creative during this time, too. Yeah. And there's this kind of pressure to be, well, you're at home now. So, you know. All this time in the world. Yeah. You have, you could do any, like, gosh, why haven't you released an album already? You know what I mean? So I was definitely feeling that. And most of it was me just, you know, uh, pressuring myself and just taking everybody else's uh, things and being like, well, I should be, oh, I should have painted a mas masterpiece already. And I should have written a book or whatever, you know. Or like pull to Beyonce and release, like you said, an album the next day or something. What are we do? We're slacking right now, I'd say. But, uh, but no, I was, so I was feeling all of that. And so, and I, I eventually realized that that's probably what it was. Because I, I find that when I go and I sit down to write a song, usually that's not how it works for me. I have to uh, just kind of let it happen and then run with it when it comes. Um, and so I stopped trying to write and I, uh, I sat down one day and I, I realized I hadn't listened to an album in its entirety without doing anything else for a really long time. Yeah. Like, what was the last time that you sat down and like listened 
fully All tune out without, without doing anything else, without multitasking. Oh gosh. See, yeah, I can't even, I wouldn't even, you know? Yeah. No, I don't even remember. Yeah. I couldn't think of a time. So I sat down and, um, I have all these records that I've listened to, but I, you know, never really truly paid attention to now that I think about it. But I, I grabbed um, Joni Mitchell's Blue and I put it on the record player. And I was like, you are gonna sit here and you're gonna do nothing else. You're not gonna look at your phone. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna clean or you're not gonna do absolutely anything. And so I just put on the record, I opened all the windows and I sat there and I listened to the song and I just read the lyrics on the, um, on the album uh, pages. And, and afterwards I sat there and I was like, huh, that was really nice. Just like <laughs> listening. Really cool. and I, was just like, yeah. I was like, I felt, and I felt so much better. But then at that moment I realized I was like listening and she, Joni Mitchell mentions birds a lot in her songs I've noticed and, or just nature. And I was listening and I noticed how incredibly loud the birds have been and were that morning and I was just like and I, I just had the thought like how weird they're so chipper happy they have no idea what's happening and and I thought that was just such an interesting thought like to think that the birds are out there living their lives and they have no idea what's going on they're just singing as loud as they ever have and and probably louder and so I I sat I just ended up writing that one lyric down and then I was like well hmm. I might as well and so I do sometimes if I feel inspired at all, I'll just sit down and like write a word vomit diary entry. <laughs> you just like love it. You know, anything that comes out, not try to censor myself at all. Uh, and just like write down everything that comes to mind and then leave it and come back to it later and then pick out things that I think could work. So. Have you read any, um, this, what you just said about just re, you know, writing free flow. Have you read anything by, uh, Anne Lamott, Bird by Bird? Uh-uh. There's a, it's a book called Bird by Bird. And I remember it just cause I, I had to read it in college for one of my English classes. And it talks about just that fleet, like free form of writing and what that does with your creativity. But I feel like you would really like it. Bird by Bird? Yes. Which is funny cause we're just talking about birds, but. <laughs> we're talking about the birds. I mean, my God. <laughs> Yes. But no, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up for sure. Yeah, because I find it, it's so it's so helpful not to, you know, censor yourself as you go or try to create something good. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that stops, you know, a lot of people and me a lot where I'm trying to like create something good or create anything at all. I think sometimes when you just go, I'm just going to write some stuff down, hope for the best, but not worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, releases the pressure of it too. Um, and then so that that's how the song started. And then I, I, um, I pretty much had it finished. And then I was like, I don't know. And then I, I took it, I sent it to my friend, Steve Solomon. And um, I was like, what do you think about this? <laughs> what do you think? And he was, I was like, it's a quarantine song. <laughs> no, called Six Feet Apart. <laughs> and he was, he was into it. And so we started working on it together. And and then we got it out really quick because I, I didn't know. I'm like, I hope this is irrelevant soon. I hope this won't make any sense in a week or two or three, you know. And so I was like, well, if we're going to put it out at all, we might as well put it out now and not, you know, not worry too much about, about um, you know, doing like a big thing. So we just dropped it and saw how it went. <laughs> Well, it's so well written. I mean, I truly mean that. And I just, what I think is so interesting about this song is, you know, people have put into words um, and into art form, like what they felt about this quarantine. And I just heard so much of your personal perspective from this. Like the one line that says, um, let my grandma get her lipstick on my cheek. And yeah. talking about how it's like now your new favorite. Like that's something that I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, so, I mean, how did you come up with just these different, different things that you maybe in the past didn't take notice or, you know, now you're really, you appreciate, not that you did appreciate it before, but. Yeah. Well, and I, and it, well, I was thinking about how, um, I mean, what, I think what's weird about this, I mean, there's plenty weird about all this, but 
I think the the most interesting thing to me is like having to cross this like when I'm going on a walk with my dog and I got my mask on and everything and having to cross the street when somebody's coming and and um so that you're not too close and you know because their sidewalks small and I'm like I remember thinking like what a weird thing I miss being next to people that yes. I don't know yes and I never would have realized that without this whole thing happening and even like standing next to someone at a concert and singing or a big group of people or being even like being in a restaurant and um, you know the people next to you having their conversation and you're having yours and then there's people over there like people fill up our lives in a way that I think you take for granted because it's just like well obviously like there's right. people everywhere you know you can't get away from it um and now it's like oh those people are really important in our lives even if we don't know them and even if we'll never see them again yeah um and then as far as the the line about my grandma i i have this uh she gave me this lipstick that she she loves it's like a dollar store <laughs> lipstick that's like it's green but then when you put it on it turns pink and i was just oh my god I, I had just tried it on because i was like i found it i am doing a lot of cleaning and yeah. so I, just because i'm like i need to do something and so i cleaned out my my makeup drawer which was a very scary scary place and and i found this lipstick and i was like well, i'll try it on and i put it on it was like hot pink very intense and it just made me think of my grandma and her that's the one makeup that she wears she swears she's allergic to all makeup oh i gotcha um but she she yeah she puts on this lipstick and i was thinking about it and then i was just like huh i just write about my gr and my grandma and i are incredibly close we scrabble over facetime love it which is um, pretty difficult actually i found <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what did she say to you when she heard the song? Um, she, I mean, she, she loved it. I played her especially, I had to play her that part a couple times. She missed it. And I was like, do you hear the, do you hear that you're in it? <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, okay, we'll play it again. Um, and, and yeah, she, I mean, she loves it. She loves it. She's back in Georgia. Um, and thankfully I had just, I would just been in Georgia before all this. Awesome. So I've been able to see her, but, um, but yeah, she definitely, she definitely loved it. And then we played Scrabble. And then you played Scrabble. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I really feel like everybody that's heard that will hear this song if they haven't is going to love it. And I can't wait, you know, at the end of this interview for you, you to perform it, but you're also going to perform it for a second time today, um, for a live virtual event, um, to support entertainers. In, in film and television. It's called the We All Play Our Part for uh, MPTF um, on YouTube. The Motion Picture and Television Fund, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's super cool. I was, I was asked um, to, somebody heard the song and then asked me to, uh, to play it, which was so, so cool. Cause I, I mean, I would have said, yeah, I'm like, I'll get the song out anywhere. Um, I love that. And then when I saw, who was going to be um, on the broadcast? I was like, yes. oh, okay, oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's George Clooney, Ray Romano, uh, Brad Paisley, Jodie Foster, Joel McHale. Yeah, so many amazing people, and it's cool because I'm an actor as well. So to be a part of, to be sharing my music with the acting community also, and the uh, the entertainment industry, and the it's just like. It's so cool, so cool to be a part of it. What do you love about having, because uh, eventually I want to talk about your acting career, um, obviously, yeah. but being able to kind of go back and forth between the two. I love it. Um, I mean, music keeps me sane, for sure, uh, because it's, it's interesting. Acting is so much a, a thing where, um, you know, you really have to, you really depend on other uh, factors, you know, you, to be on a set, it takes so much, you have to audition and then you've got to go through all of these things in order to actually make it there. But with music, you can, I can sit down by myself, write a song, put it out and then it's out, you know? So music has been able to keep me sane. And then I just, I love being on a set. 
I love that. Kind of feels like summer camp all the time, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like you all get together to do this or like theater summer camp. You all get together to create this thing. Um, and it's the, the, the community that you have in that is, is just so amazing. And then, um, yeah, I just, I love it. I love them both so much. People always want me to choose and I refuse. You don't have to. I don't have to. No. Oh. I refuse. I'll never do it. Never say. I love hearing that. Do you think you'll ever pl like play a character that has a musical performance? In a show? I hope so. That'd be it's awesome. It's so weird. I haven't, I did one, this is kind of mortifying, but I did an episode of The Closer a long time ago. And I was like kind of a musician in it, but it's like not the same <laughs> at all. Um, is uh, yeah, but yes, I hope I hope that that um, comes up at some point because that would be amazing to have those cross. You'd be really good at that. So yeah, yes. Um, and speaking of which, um, I was looking at your Instagram, and you posted something yesterday that you know showcased memories from some of your favorite productions like Parenthood, which I, last year, I actually watched the entire, entire series through. Had you ever seen it before? I'd seen, seen bits and pieces, but I'd okay. never like taken each episode by episode and followed a story like that, it's, well, with yeah. Parenthood. Um, but I mean, I was even thinking before uh, we got on Zoom, like what it would be like to have a Parenthood episode in quarantine, because that's what I love so much about it, is it's such a real series. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, it was the, it was the absolute best. That cast and crew was just the most amazing, amazing group of people. What was it like to prep for um, Amy Ellis's character? Um, well, what's crazy is uh, it was only supposed to be three episodes and then it turned into three seasons, which is like <laughs> amazing. The coolest thing ever. Uh, but I just remember, um, I don't really remember. I mean, the, the, the thing is when the writing is that good, it's like, you, you almost don't even have to do anything. It's, it's, it's incredible when you get um, a character like that in a, in a show like that. And, and what was interesting is when I went in for the audition with, um, I auditioned with Miles, by Drew, uh, for a, just a chemistry read. And uh, I, they wanted us to improvise together. And I, you never know on a show if when they, when they say that they really want you to do it or, or it's just like, cause most shows are, you stick to the script. Okay. And that is, you know, you sit word for word. Yeah. Um, Parenthood was like, well, you know, however it comes out. And I was like, mm, are you sure? I don't know. I don't trust. I don't trust this. I don't know. I feel like I'm, yeah, no. So uh, that my first taste of that was in the audition. Um, you know, I had those scenes down like crazy and um, was so prepared. And then they were like, cool. So now that we've done that, just, you know. And I was like, mm, nope. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Cause I'd never been asked to, you know, improvise in an audition before. And I was just like, oh, okay. So, uh, me and Miles, you know, got to play off of each other and it was so much fun. And then when we got on set for the first time together, uh, they were doing that on set and I was just like, wait, what, what, what? are we, is this really happening? And then I was like, am I allowed to do this too? Because <laughs> I'm like this, sometimes the script won't make sense unless I play off of you and what you're doing. And, but it was so cool. Cause again, like the writing was so amazing, but then the fact that they gave us so much freedom on getting from A to B and how we did that was kind of, um, is, it, it was just kind of freeing and amazing. And I've never had that experience on any other set. And it's, it's just so cool. I can imagine that a situation like that um, would help you grow even more as an actress to be able to experiment and, you know. Yeah, keeps you on your toes, which is exciting, you yeah. know, when, it's, when nothing, nothing ever felt stale, I have to say, because you never knew what was going to happen. 
you shared a couple other photos too from Pretty Little Liars and Law and Order SVU. Um, so out of that collection, as you were posting those photos, were there any memories that came to mind that you hadn't thought of in a while that you were like, oh my gosh, I forgot about this moment or you know that you would like to share with our listeners? It's so funny. I had, Instagram only allows 10 photos. I had like, yeah. Sucks. Fifty, because I was I was thinking about the the motion picture and television funds fundraiser, and I was like I should I, I should go back and like look at these casts and crews and that I've been a part of and um and so I went very deep I went way 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 back um, <laughs> and so I had like a hundred photos oh my god like okay I'm gonna have to really narrow this down um but. I, SVU was just the best. Marishka Hargitay and Kelly Goodish, um, that photo. That was my, that was, I think the last day that I worked on, on my first episode. They ended up bringing me back, um, which was so cool um, to get to play that character again. But Marishka Hargitay is the greatest number one on a call sheet ever. She just had this, air about her I'm like she's just regal Uh, and so I I remember going on to that set for the first time and I had uh, my first day was this incredibly long scene where it's just me explaining all of these traumatic things for pages and pages and pages and I remember being like oh god like how is this gonna I don't know yeah, and, and and it's always I always feel like the first day on a set is just nerve wracking anyway because you know you're kind of the um, I don't know you're like the new kid in school especially when you're a guest star it's like you know everyone knows each other and everyone's got this rapport and you don't yet and um, and so I walked onto that set and she pulled me aside and she said. Um, look, I need you to know that I've got your back. And if you need to stop in the middle and start over, if you need to go to the end and start right back over, you just let me know. Or if you need a break and you need, like she just took care of me in such a way that I've never experienced. And I was just like, huh, I want to remember the way that made me feel. Cause I'm like, one day when I get to be that for somebody else, I want to, and I want to remember that. So she was just like, love her love her would you consider her one of your mentors in acting in the acting world i mean i I mean we're not still in contact now so in in that sense um not like a continuing one but like i will always remember how she was on a set and how she kind of took care of her cast and crew and so in that way yes for sure she's definitely something somebody that i look to her and and i mean the entire cast of Parenthood and, yes. you know, Peter Krause is just incredible and Lauren Graham, and Monica Potter, everybody Lauren does. Graham. I love Lauren Graham. Who doesn't? No, not a soul in the world doesn't like <laughs> Lauren Graham. Lauren Graham is just awesome. She is. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, I want to, you know, kind of go off a little bit and talk about another um, mentor, mentorship that happened last year at Austin City Limits Festival. Yes. With Miss Casey Musgraves. Uh, yes. That was so great. Um, you won, so I'm going to pull up this notes. Um, you won the contest called Empowered by Bumble Biz. And you got to hang out with Casey and, you know, talk to her about your music career. So yeah. share what that was like and share maybe something that she, she told you about songwriting in particular that you really, really um, felt was insightful. Well, I, so I learned about the contest on her Instagram. I follow her on Instagram and I saw she posted this thing and I didn't really know what it was, but all I knew that it was like mentorship with her. And I was like, cool, I'll submit. Sure. So you had to submit your music. And, um, and so I submitted a song called honest and, uh, and then she chose it. And what's really cool is I, I later found out I have a friend, um, who, uh, is friends with her and then later told me that her and her husband um, were the ones that they kind of picked my submission, which was so cool because he's such an amazing artist as well. Um, So that was cool because I didn't know. I'm like, I don't know if any, like, I don't know if they picked it out of a pile and were like, yeah, sure, that one. And then 
and then they just say that she listened to it and right so that was that was really cool to um to find out but um but yeah she was just she was great so i flew to austin and uh got to meet with her right before her performance uh which was just it was just cool to see her in that um I don't know, right before going on to stage, like an hour or so before. And um, we sat down and talked about everything. We just uh, covered the the business side of things, which was really cool. And she was so honest with me about about her feelings about it and um, and gave me such great advice. But I think the main main thing that I walked away with was, you know, she was kind of saying like, don't try to be anybody else or do anything and like just do what you love and then the people that will love that will find you true so don't don't like try and um basically just be yourself and um as like cliche ish as that sounds it's like it's so true as long as you make what you want to make it'll it'll be good as long as you love it as long as you put out what's true to you, then you can't really fail. Cause even if it doesn't, you know, reach millions and millions of people, at least you love it. So yeah. I think that's kind of what she said is like, you just have to love what you put out. I totally agree because it, you know, that's what keeps it fun. And that's what keeps you, you know, have, to be able to have the ability to filter out everyone's opinion and what people might think. And, you know, I just, I really think it's so great you know, those of you that like, like you that um, love experimenting with different types of art forms and, you know, continue to put out things that give people hope. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I loved, I love that. That's awesome. Um, and what festival, I have to ask, what festival do you hope to attend after all of this is over? Like if you had to choose one music festival to go to? I'd love to go back to ACL. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. I love it. Um, also Stagecoach. I've never been, never been. Me neither. Ah, I want to go so bad. And it's so, it's so dumb because it's close to me or close, (laughs) you know, it's like, it's right there. I've been to Coachella once, which was insane. Um, but, and I would, I would just love to go to Stagecoach. I, there's a, there's a festival that happens here in Nashville called the Pilgrimage Festival. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's, it's a little bit smaller. Um, it started a couple years ago, but it's a little bit like Bonnaroo and the way that they set it up and everything, but it's a lot of Americana, indie, pop. So if you're ever in Nashville in September, you know, when this is all over with, I think you would really like that. Good to know. I know, I'm like, let's go, let's do it. I mean, it's so, it's so weird to think when things will start back, but. Yeah. Crossing fingers. Fingers crossed. Yes. And, um, you know, as long as everyone's gonna be safe and like that's, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how, how things come back, but for sure. Well, I'm really, I'm so excited that you got to be on the show today and thank you so much for taking your time. Um, where can people follow you and keep up with you? And, um, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Skylar day. Twitter is at Skylar day. I need to get better at Twitter, but you know, it's fine. Um, (laughs) I'm really bad at it. I don't know. Like, I just don't know what to do. I forget. I forget. I'm like, oh yeah, I probably should tweet today. And it's been like five days ago. (laughs) I don't know what to do. I just pretty much like repurpose everything and put it on there. I don't know. I need to get better at it. Or do I? I don't know. But uh, Do go wherever you feel like your fans are going to be. And yeah, yeah. Like that. But uh, Facebook is uh, official Skylar Day, and then YouTube is just Skylar Day. So pretty much Skylar Day on all Everywhere. the things, except for Facebook, which is official Skylar Day. Yep. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. Skylar, this was so much fun. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. All right, we'll talk soon. Okay, sounds good. Got my black coffee with a teaspoon of honey in my dad's old mug Same morning as yesterday but nothing's really the same is it hun The world is on fire It's
it's all over TV. So we shut all our doors and get drunk on our screens. The birds are singing still, they don't know what's going on. If I had wings like theirs, I'd probably sing along. But I've been sitting at my kitchen table for weeks, making green notebooks, staring back empty. I'm at a loss for words, don't know what I don't know. All of my thoughts keep getting caught in my throat. I guess that it's simple when you get to the heart. Turns out six feet feels like. It's the Livio Show. It's the Livio Show. 